If you've been following this channel for a while, then you know that I think that streamer.bot is the best chatbot for any Twitch stream. I have shown how to set up alerts, redemptions, commands, but I've never made a 101 guide for streamer.bot. That changes now, right after a word by our sponsor. Hi, it's me. I'm the sponsor. You know those live streams you saw me do on this channel? Well, I do more of them over on Twitch, building cool things, answering questions, talking about Twitch news, and we play games too. Come check it out. I'll leave a link down in the description below. First and foremost, we're going to have to install streamer.bot. To do this, go to streamer.bot and press the big old download button right in the center. After it's done downloading, drag it somewhere and extract it somewhere you can easily find it. Open the folder and find the streamer.bot executable and open it. There, that's one step done. It is now ready to run on your PC. Now let's connect it to the streaming platform of your choice. For Twitch, go into the platforms menu, go into Twitch and go to accounts. Then click login. This will take you to the Twitch login screen where you can simply click authorize and it will log you in into streamer.bot. If you also want to add a bot account with a custom name, then you need to make that account on Twitch first. For this, you may need a separate email address or you can go into your settings and then into your account settings, security and privacy, and turn on enable additional account creation. Once you've done that, you simply make a new account and use that account to log into the bot account. For YouTube, it is pretty much the same. Read the terms and conditions and the privacy policy. Liar! Then log into your YouTube account exactly the same way you would have done with your Twitch account. Now that your Twitch or YouTube is connected, streamer.bot has access to the respective APIs, which pretty much means it can talk to Twitch and YouTube. It can receive alert triggers, read all the messages in your chat, and if you mod your bot account, even time people out or ban people. More on that soon. So far though, it can't really do anything which your viewers may be able to see, because for that it needs to connect to your OBS. So let's do that next. Open up your OBS and head into the Tools menu. Click on the WebSocket Server settings and click Enable WebSocket Server. And that's it for OBS. Back to Streamer.bot. Head into the Stream Apps tab and right click. Click Add and add a name for the OBS that you are using. Leave the version on 5.x and for your host IP port and password, Add the information you get from the WebSocket server settings menu when you click Show Connect Info. Make sure to tick the Auto Connect on Startup and Reconnect on Disconnect boxes and click OK. And that's the main setup done. Your streamer.bot can now talk to your streaming platform and your streaming software. But most of you will be using third-party alerts such as Streamlabs and Stream Elements. Have an Elgato Stream Deck or Camera Hub or many of the other integrations that streamer.bot has to offer. So let me show you how that works as well. Head into the integrations tab and head to the thing you want to add. For us, we are going to add stream elements. You then just click on the login button and log in. Just follow the instructions. To connect to the Elgato software in streamer.bot, you need to head into the integrations tab and jump straight into the Elgato subfolder. Click Auto Start and click Start Server. This way it will automatically connect to the Stream Deck. Then head to the Wavelink or Camera Hub software, click Auto Connect, Auto Reconnect and Connect and you are done. Oh, and you can trigger all the actions you make from your Stream Deck by downloading the Streamer.bot plugin from their marketplace. Speaking of actions, shall we get to making some? Heading into the Actions tab, we are greeted by three boxes the actions, the sub-actions, and the triggers. You can think of the actions as a factory. The job of the factory is to output cars, but you can't just tell the factory robots to make a car. You need to tell them where and when each of the four wheels has to go on and how the engine needs to be installed, etc. That's what the sub-actions do. The sub-actions are the individual instructions that end you with a good action. So what we're going to do is make a follow age action which tells people how long they have been following you. First, we're going to make the action, we'll call it follow age. And then in the sub-actions, we're going to the Twitch menu, followers, and you say get follow age for target. 
leave the source type to user and click OK. This will provide streamer.bot with all the required information that we are going to need to finish off this action. One of the really cool things is that streamer.bot allows you to use variables, which automatically fill in when an action is triggered. But to use these, we must encapsulate them, meaning we need to do a percentile sign before and after the variable we are looking to call. Stay with me. I know that was a lot of gibberish, so let me show you how that works. So in the Twitch submenu, chat send message to channel we are going to write a message that is going to be sent into your chat percentile sign user percentile sign you have been following broadcast user for follow a short impressive here the user is replaced by the username broadcast user is replaced by your username and follow a short is the time they have been following but because we've added the follow age info this has already been found and calculated by streamer.bot if you're ever worried on how you can find these variables, you can always check the streamer.bot wiki, or you can go into the actions queue tab after you have run the action into action history and inspect variables after run. That gives you a nice little list of all of those that are available. This was of course a really simple example of how you can set up an action, but there's so much more you can do. In the Twitch tab, you can have it run ads, create clips, time people out, ban people, manage your channel point redemptions, and so much more. But that is not all. Since we have it hooked to OBS, we can change active scenes, change the text in the text source, turn on and off sources and sound. We can even take screenshot. Man, Streamer the Bot can just do so much awesome stuff because it's just there on your PC and not in a cloud. So it can interact with files, have a delay, run programs. You get it. Streamer the Bot can do practically everything. The only thing left to do for us to finish off the follow age action is give it a trigger. As the name suggests, a trigger tells Streamer the Bot when it should make the action happen. There are generally two kinds of triggers that you need to consider automatic triggers which happen without your interaction or your viewers interaction such as by twitch stream elements or any of the other integrations and manual actions those which require you or your viewers to do something there are tons of automatic triggers that you can use but in general if anything happens on twitch or youtube then you can use it as a trigger follow subscribers members cheers super chats when a stream starts or stops, when ads start or end, whenever shield mode is started or stopped, the list goes on and on. I can really suggest just having a little look through all the menus to see how many things you can actually do with these. For the manual ones, there are really five possibilities. And the first one of those and the one we are going to need right now is commands. To finish up our follow edge command, we are going to head into the triggers, core, command command triggered and we're going to click create command first things first let's give the command a name we'll just call it follow age and then we are going to have to give it a command then in the commands we write the exact wording we want this to respond to in our case we will just go with exclamation point follow age right besides the command box we can choose the location which is where this command has to be for it to work start end or anywhere you can have some fun with this as well by for example creating a command that responds whenever somebody says i'm hungry with hi hungry i'm bot anyway then for the options ignore bot account means that anything classed as a bot cannot trigger this event usually it is best to leave this on ignore internal messages means that if the message was sent by streamer.bot on any account then it is ignored Leave this on to prevent infinite loops. Persist per user counter means that it will keep track of how many times each user has redeemed a specific command, even if you close streamer.bot down. Persist counter does the same, but for the total amount of redemptions. Case sensitive makes the command case sensitive. It's simple. The source options tells you what streamer.bot will reply to. Simply tick the ones you want to use. In my case, just Twitch messages and YouTube messages, but you can set it to many different things. For the cooldowns, the global cooldown is the cooldown for all people, while the user cooldown counts for that person alone, for a single user. Usually what you will want to do is that the global cooldown is either the same 
or shorter than the user cooldown. In this case, let's say that we globally want the follow age command to not have any cooldown, but we don't want a user to ask it more than every five minutes. So that's 300 seconds. The last part we have to talk about with commands is permissions. Here you can tell streamer.bot who can use these commands. Mods, subs, VIPs, or everyone are the usual options. But by going to the user permissions, you can literally add single users to get a permission. So it can be super fine grained, which is kind of cool. We just want to set the user cooldown, as I said, to five minutes, which is 300 seconds and leave everything else as is. The second way we can trigger something is using hotkeys. Well, technically the second and third way, because we will tackle this and the Stream Deck plugin at the same time. Head into the hotkeys and right click add. Here you can choose the key that you would want to react to and any modifiers that you want it to hold down at the same time. Just make sure it's not a key that is used while you're streaming or gaming already or you are going to trigger this every time that happens. By the way, if you use a Stream Deck plugin, you don't need any hotkeys. You can directly map the action to the Stream Deck key and you are ready to go immediately. Of course, on Twitch, you also get access to channel points. And the channel point management system inside streamer.bot is amazing. Head into the platforms, go into channel point rewards, and the tab itself tells you what to do already. <laughs> to create a channel point redemption, you need to be a Twitch affiliate. But once you are, it's super easy to set up and manage. Just right click to add. The name is what you see when you open up the channel points rewards menu in chat. And the prompt is what you see when you click the channel point reward. If your channel point reward needs your viewer to enter some information, such as the name of a map, a gun, a challenge, then make sure to toggle user input required. You can then set the maximum number of redemptions per stream or the maximum number of redemptions per user per stream. And again, just like with the commands, we can set a global cooldown. And if we want the counter to persist globally, or per user. Now we press OK and it makes a channel point redemption. Lastly, and probably most amazingly, there is voice control built into streamer.bot. Head into the voice control tab and head into the settings tab. Set the locale to whichever language you stream in, for me that is English, and click auto start listen. At the bottom, set your audio input device to your microphone, which for me is DLZ Creator 1 2, and click start listening. It will now start listening to everything you say. If you head into the log, you can see it pop up in real time, which is kind of cool, but you still need to make the command. To do this, head into the commands tab and add a new command. Set the name for the command to whatever you want it to be and set the command field to the thing it needs to hear for it to trigger. For example, hey chat, clip that. The location is a little odd and doesn't work great, so let's leave that at exact. Click OK and you are done. To add these as triggers to your actions, all these manual triggers can be found in the core menu. But let's say you have multiple alerts, follow, raid, subscriber, cheer, all of them. And you don't want them to play through each other because that would be super obnoxious. Well, there is a solution for that. Head into the action cues tab again and head into the cues tab. Right click and make a new cue called alerts. Then make sure you toggle blocking on. And when you get back to your actions tab, you can set each of these actions to the alerts queue. Because you've made the queue blocking, it will wait until it has finished one alert every single time before it moves on to the next one. So now you know how to set up actions, how triggers work, how action queues work, and how to add different platforms, integrations, and so much more. But that is not everything that this can do. Remember the quote system that Stream Elements and Nightbot introduced? That exists in Streamer.bot too and is much easier to manage. Head into the settings and open the quotes tab. All you need to do is click enable and it will automatically listen to exclamation point quote, exclamation point quote add and exclamation point quote remove. You can also change the permissions as to who is able to add quotes to your channel. Plus, you can see all the quotes that ever got added here so if you want to remove one at some point, you can go in here and simply right click the quote and remove it. 
And if there is something streamer.bot can't do, then you can simply code it in C Sharp yourself. Yes, you can code all kinds of awesome stuff directly into streamer.bot, meaning the possibilities really are virtuously endless. If you want to see that kind of stuff being done live, by the way, then make sure to subscribe to the channel. I love coding new things and answering streaming questions live. But having these creative epiphanies or learning how to yoink and twist a thing so that they work for you can be very hard, especially if you have to learn to code as well. That is why I made a video for you right here where I try and give you simple channel point rewards ideas that can be implemented as commands as well. And as always, stream better, stream smart.